Alright, this is the last video for this project. We're going to finish this up today. I'm guaranteeing. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and, uh, and start putting some sheathing on here. A couple things just to clean up. We're going to take our move tool. I just want to grab this sh shape right in. Whoops, didn't mean to do that. There. Yeah, I had it and lost it. Hit T for top. And I just want to bring this straight out to the front. We're going to use these profiles to uh, uh, to cut our sheathing. So let's turn off some levels. We're going to turn off our um, three D window. We'll turn off the three D door right here. So we just have the framing on here. <coughs> And we're going to start with our uh, sheathing. So we want to go to 3D wall sheathing right here. I'm going to do this in white. It's one color I haven't touched. I'll just zoom into this back corner. Now I'm not going to do the 4 by 8 sheets of plywood. It's just it gets a little too much. So we'll go to our solids modeling tool. E1. We're going to start here. It's going to be colon 0.5 one half inch thick. We'll go all the way to the other end. Snap right into there. And then our height, just extend it right up above the top. That way we can trim it. I'm going to make sure my ACS plane snap isn't on anytime we're drawing. And then on this one, we'll actually um, go to the outside of the piece we just put on because I probably won't put much trim on this just to save us some time and again we'll extend this one up above the top we'll go to the back outside edge here and we'll go colon 0.5 zoom right in I think I'm looking for this sure I'm on the right outside edge here. That is hard to see. I think it's right there. Extend it up above the roof. And the last one we'll do is on this side, colon 0.5. Go all the way down to this side. Just let it snap to that outside edge and then bring up the height. So now we'll turn this to a front view. Do a fit view now. We're going to trim these. So we're going to turn on our ACS plane snap. and We're just going to draw a shape to the underside of the roof framing. Actually that'll overlap but yeah, that's alright. We'll, uh, we'll hit F right up here. It gives us the right angle. We'll just come back and close the shape. Once we close that shape off we can come back here now and do a cut. Make sure you say keep profile. So we're in our T cut solid by uh, um, what the heck is it? Cut solid by curves or shapes. So we're just going to select each one. This one with this shape this one with this shape, this one with this shape, and lastly this one with this shape. So we have four separate pieces of sheathing on the on the face of the walls. We'll go back to our isometric and a fit view. And what I want to do is I want to cut our sheathing. Originally I thought we'd put two windows in the front, but I think from a time standpoint we'll just put the one window there. Um, and before I do yeah, that'll work. Cut solid all the way through. Uh, in this case we don't need to keep the profile because we're just going to make the one window cut. Select the sheathing, then select the shape for the window rough opening, and then left click. We're going to do the same thing with the door. So our sheathing actually goes through the bottom. If we actually look at this in an illustrated mode, you can see our sheathing on the shed with our door and window rough opening in place. Now what we're going to do is do our roof sheathing. So we're going to go up here and change our level 
to 3D roof sheathing. <coughs> Turn off your ACS plane snap. And we're going to do it at E1. I'm going to hit F. And I'm just going to snap to these two corners right here. Front. Well, those aren't going to be just right, so. Colon 0.5. So what I did is I snapped to the inside edge of the faces. It doesn't mean they're going to stay there, but it's, it's a start. So in other words, I left, snapped right to this inside edge. Go to our front view now so we can see this. And what I want to do is see if we can stretch this out. So just take your selection tool and see the two. What happens as soon as I hit that selection tool, it allows me to stretch this and it rotates that compass so it matches that angle. And just bring it out maybe an inch overhang. And we're going to come down to the other end. I'm dynamically panning down to the other end. And we're going to do the same thing. Select, grab one of the blue squares and extend that one out. If I change this now to a, uh, we'll go transparent just to try something different. Turn on our ACS plane snap and what we're going to do is just draw a shape right here so we can trim this fascia board on the back. Same thing, cut solid, select the fascia board, select the shape and there's one. Now on this top one for the front fascia board, we're going to have to raise it up a little bit or stretch it. We'll make a little bit longer board. So I'm just going to take my selection tool and pull this straight up. Now we can take our shape tool again and trim this one and then turn off the ACS plane snap. Do a fit view and an isometric and now we're starting to see more of our information. Let's turn our door on. 3D door and 3D window. We don't need our building shape. There's a there's kind of a neat little tool here. It's this pair of feet. It's called walk. If you click on that you can actually click. Yeah, of course this is going to work right for me now. Let me put a little perspective on it and we'll roll this building up so it's kind of at ground level. So let's just pretend we're walking into the shed now. So I'm just, oh I know why, turn off this, no it's not on, okay. So you can see as you push your mouse ahead you can you can actually walk into it if it wasn't disappearing. It's, I think it's probably, I have the settings, view attributes, clip back and clip front off. So now let me try the, the walk tool again and see if it shouldn't disappear now when I try to walk into the, the building. You just kind of put some pressure on the mouse. You can grade in and walk around and it takes a little practice as you can see I haven't been practicing much in my move left to right, kind of move in, trying to walk through the building. Once I get in here, I should be able to see inside. There we are. We're inside the shed now. You can see the studs. Look out through the window. We'll go out the door. There we are. We're back outside again. Just one of those tools you can kind of play around with. I'm, I'm fooling around now. but So now let's uh, let's take a look at exporting these things now to some visible edges. So let's go to our front view which is actually this end and I'm going to take this perspective out and we want to see um, wireframe. There's the end of our building. Um, looks like everything is in place. We're just going to do an export visible edges with the, the standard um, top front and right side view. Now I do want to turn on my cut, cut uh, view attributes for the, the clip black back and clip front and say apply to all open views. So on this first one we're going to go to our level display and we've got a 2D 
top, 2D right side, and a 2D front. We're going to use those. We're going to create some more in a minute. So we're going to go to File, Export, Visible Edges, View 1 matches up. We're going to go into the Active File and say, let's try Exact instead of Fast and see what difference that makes. It's going into the Level 2D Front and it's uh, actually let's let's we're gonna even though it's the right front view let's call this the 2d right side just because it makes more sense colors gonna be blue style zero we don't want to see the hidden line so let's just look at a preview of this looks good you see all the studs disappear and all we're seeing is just an outline of the building we're gonna say export <coughs> okay we've set export let's go turn that level off and that was 2d front 2d right side sorry turn that off and we're going to roll this around to a right side view actually we want the left side because that'll show us the door so we're looking straight at the door now we're going to change this level to 2d front because now this is what I would perceive as the front of the building we'll say preview there's our building um, what you're seeing up here are the undersides of our soffit or fascia where the rafters are sticking out over the top so that's fine we'll say export um, we don't need a, a the other side um, what we want to do now is a top view so let's rotate this to a top view and we'll rotate this 90 degrees when we get a chance what we want to do is try to get the floor plan of this building in the right spot. Now this is kind of a little bit different, uh, but I want to bring up view 2. And we're going to say, I'm going to make this smaller so we can just see a little bit of it. And no idea what that is. Um, so what we're going to do is we want to see the plan view. Let's roll this up to a front view. And we want to see from about halfway down the window down to the bottom. So we're going to do a cut on this one. Um, we're going to say, oh, that's what those shapes. We don't need those shapes anymore. So let's take those out of there. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to do a uh, set display depth which is not turned on here so you want to right click on this tool frame up here and say set dis set display depth and you're going to see this little television set kind of appear it's a and we're just going to say left click on this view we're going to say in this plan view so left click in the plan view and then we see this line and I want to see this from about this location down to just below the, the, um, the floor you can see that makes it disappear. Now doing that, if we say 2D top now, we won't see the roof outline. Um, and we can say, let's preview that. There's our plan view with the studs and the sheathing in there. We'll probably edit this a little bit, but that looks pretty good. Just say export. Now on this one, what I want to do is come up here and I want to make 2D top my active level. And I'm going to come over here and say right click all off. Right click. And click. Right click. I just went to global display. There we go. That's all I want to see. And there's a few things I want to make changes, not changes, but additions. So I'm going to take a green line in this 2D top view. And I just want to do a swing for this door um, hit my tilde key this I'm just in the smart line and hit T for top there we go swing this arc out so we can see the door swing going in um, these floor sh lines should probably be in red because they're quite a bit in the distance I'm just going to change those to red. <coughs> we'll 
look at the window. That yeah, looks pretty good. We just see the lower sash on here, but we can change the window just to kind of give it some some feeling so that we can and we've got a a roof outline on there that we can draw in later. So uh, actually what we could do keeping it in this is just turn on the um, fascia 3D fascia or 3D trim. That's not showing up. Oh, it's because I'm in the cut depth. So it's not going to show it because I'm... Actually, it'll work. If I do a fit view right now, so everything comes up, now I can see those. All I'm going to do is take my red. This is going to still be in 2D top, and you'll see what it's going to do in a second. I just want to grab the outside edges of this with my smart line, Q1 just trace a box around the outside. That's going to give me an outline of my roof up above. So when we come back here and turn off those elements, I'll see, still see the roof outline. So it'll give me a little more accurate view. Okay. Not quite done yet. Uh, but we can go, let's, let's take a break kind of and go to our sheet file. Our sheet file is 11 by 17 and we'll put our top view, front view and right side. Top view being the one we just finished. So let's go to um, file, excuse me, reference, tools, attach. We're going to go find our CT120 directory. projects assignment 12 and we want our 3d model standard view is going to be top and the size on this let's try quarter inch equals a foot it's a good architectural scale see if it fits it's actually a 1 to 48 reference we're going to say okay and we'll place it right here there's quite a bit of room so let's first of all let's rotate this 90 degrees uh, minus 90 degrees I think see where it went and move it back up onto the screen yeah, I should have gone 90 so It'll disappear on me again here yeah, there it is is I want these things to line up. So there's our top view. You can see with 11 by 17 it gives us a lot more room to work with. Um, let's uh, never really used this copy fold. Let's just try that. About a horizontal line. There's our front view. That's kind of cool. And if I pull it out here you know, gave me the front let's just work with that for a second and see what I got so let's go to our level display yeah that's that's not gonna work here so let's delete that one and we'll delete that one does work if you have it set up right. And what we're going to do now is go to this 3D top view and we want to turn off that 2D fascia and just leave the 2D top on. I'm going to go back to my 3D model just for a minute and just say right click all on. And I might have to say global display. There we go. So everything, excuse me, everything's on now. Sometimes that makes a difference when you're doing the sheet files. So we'll come back here, and what we're going to do now is apply that front view. So I'm going to hit attach, same drawing, 3D model, front, same scale. We're going to place that over here because that's actually our right side view. And with that, we're going to turn off in this front view, turn off everything except for 2D front. Oh, I'm sorry, 2D right. I 
keep getting mixed up because I changed the terminology on these. So two D right side. There it is. That's better. Now we'll attach one more. This one will actually be the right side 3D model. Actually, right click. I think that's the left side. It shows the door in the front. We'll see. So now if we go to our level display, left, all off except for two D front. So now we can kind of move these things around so that they're lined up properly. Move this top view up just a little bit. So that gives us our um, building outline. Now we put all that framing in here, so you know why waste that material? Let's go back to our 3D model, and we're going to create three more levels. Click your level manager, right click, and say new. This one's going to be called 2D front framing. We're going to right click, say new. This one's going to be called 2D um, left framing actually on the right side so we'll say right framing. We already have a top view and we can see the framing on that so we want one more and I think we may already have it up here 2D perspective or actually uh, we're going to change the name of that to 2D you can leave perspective in that ISO framing because we're going to have one extra space on there We'll close that out now and we're going to rotate this up to our front view. We're going to turn off um, these three levels that we just created. And we're going to turn off, excuse me, the sheathing level for the walls. And I can't tell whether those are, there we go. Turn off the wall sheathing and we're going to turn off the roof sheathing. So we're just left with this framework. And uh, yeah, we'll turn off the floor framing, floor sheathing too, just so we're consistent. And we're going to turn off the 3D window. And we're going to turn off the 3D door. Let's turn off the fascia. We don't need that. Where is 3D door? Right there. It's just going to give us a framing drawing. So now let's do a file. Uh, that shows us our. And what I want to do is just show the framing on this end. So we're going to turn on our view two again, and I need to turn on all my levels. There we go. Gets a little funky, so. We only want to see from the front to the back, so we're going to set our display depth here from this point just in a little ways. Now you can just see that framing. So we're going to say File, Export, Visible Edges, View 1, make sure it matches up to the active file, Symbology, we want this to go into 2D right framing color blue. We'll hit preview. Perfect. And say export. Now we're going to go turn that level off. It was 2D front framing. Right framing. And we're going to rotate this view to our right uh, left side and do a fit view. 
the, our windows on this right side so that's the side we want to look at. We're going to set our display depth on this one front view just left click here and I only want to see between this point and just behind the window so we don't see that framing in the background we can see our window cut out and we're going to say this one is going into 2D front framing hit preview that looks good and we're going to say export now we want to turn that level off 2D front framing and I want to rotate this around to an isometric we're going to do a fit view we're going to turn off uh, apply to open views yeah turn everything on just right click and say all on thought it did it there so everything's on now so I know what we need to take off. Take out these 2D, all the 2D stuff we'll take and turn them off. And that looks good. And like we did with our little birdhouse before, I want to rotate this around. like Kind of like this. We're going to give it some perspective with this perspective tool right here. Just left click and kind of pull it. So it gives us that visual appearance that we're looking for. Um, probably don't need to see the fascia on here. So we're going to go down to 3D fascia and just turn those off. All I want to do is see the framing. And this is a nice, um, looks like I got 3D sheathing on here. We don't want the 3D sheathing. Oh, I know what's on the 3D building outline. Pardon me. 3D building shape. There we go. That looks better. So now we've just got this framing. And what I want to do is make a nice isometric, or not an isometric, a perspective. So let's take this view right here. And we're going to say settings, or utilities, saved views. We already had one perspective here. We'll just click that and delete it. We're going to create this one from view. Uh, our description is going to be framing perspective. And then just left click on the screen. So it creates it over here. Now let's go back to our sheet view. And we can see we've got our outside the building. This is page one. I need a page two. So let's take our model tool. And actually, before we do that, let's go back to the model because I forgot to do. There's our framing. Now we need to export this to 2D ISO framing in blue. Let's just hit a preview on this. Nice. See how nicely that lines everything up and you can see your framing. And export. Now we'll just come back here and right click and say all on. So everything's in place. What the heck is that? Oh, that's that door swing. Not a problem. Okay. Now, go to your models tool. I hope I'm not jumping all over. And take this 11 by 17 sheet. And we're going to say, let's, let's change the name of this to 11 by 17 uh, page 1, P1. And then we're going to make a copy of it. And we're going to call it sheet 11 by 17, P2, and hit OK. <coughs> so as soon as it did that, it made another sheet. And what we're going to do is go back to our reference tool <coughs> and take off this top view. So we're not going to use that one. Uh, 3D model front is this one. And we want to turn some levels off here on 3D model front. We want everything but we don't want the ISO framing 
2D front. Oh. We don't want 2D right side. We don't want that. So it takes the door out. Everything else is on. So there's our framing for that. We'll go to our left side view. We'll go to our level display. Left. And we want our 2D front is off. 2D ISO framing is off. And 2D right framing is off. So now we can see our framing layout for this front view. We don't have a top view because that's all covered in the other one. But I'd like to put that isometric up here on the top. So now we're going to attach our new file, which is 3D model. We're going to go to our saved view, hit the plus sign. When I do that, I can see my framing perspective. Uh, we'll try a quarter inch to a foot, but I don't know whether it'll fit. Just hit OK. We'll see how big it is. Yeah, it looks like it might be OK. There it is. Looks kind of funky, so what we're going to do is go to our level display, framing perspective, right click and say all off, except for uh, 2D ISO framing. And we get this nice framed look. So that's page two. Close this out. We can go to page one gives us our regular, oh that changed, I wonder why. Top view, 2D top, and oh I know why because we put this other stuff in there probably. No, oh, that's what I want. I don't want this ISO, that's because I added that ISO framing level so it left that stuff in there. Uh, front view, 2D right, we need to take out this ISO framing and left take out the ISO framing there we go it's because we left those layers on there we'll do a file save settings just to be safe and uh, we'll go check our page 2 now that looks good we'll start with page 1 <coughs> we're going to go to our dimensioning tool and hit our magnifying glass because we have a civil we have a mechanical I'm going to take this civil and I'm going to copy it. And we're going to call it Arch V1. <coughs> we're going to go to our units. We've got master unit, subunit. We're in feet and inches. We want to go to the nearest sixteenth of an inch because everything will be printed out in fractions now. Our angles can be to two decimal places. We don't want to show secondary units, so uncheck that. Uh, reference scale, that's all good. The text is good. Symbology is good. Geometry. We'll just say um, text aligned. Let's go above the line with this because it's architectural. And then hit your save tool. We'll start on this top view with our architectural dimension and we want to go from this outside edge to this outside edge 8 foot 1 inch. So that's 8 feet plus half inch sheathing on both sides. That's our unit dimension. Come down here this should be 12 foot 1. We generally dimension to the center line of a door so if I find a center point here, I'll just uh, I'll just draw a little line segment. Yeah, I didn't want to do it in black; do it in red. It should it'll find that anyway, so we don't even bother. We'll just go from this point, the center point of the door. As long as I snap to a point that's part of that, so three foot ten and three quarters to the center line of the door. Same thing down here for the window. We go from this corner center point of the window, two foot nine and a quarter gives us that information. Uh, we want to show our studs at 16 inches on center. It's going to show up as one foot four. You can see how that hits that line. <coughs> Excuse me, just take your modification tool, modify element, grab the text, you're going to pull it in inside. 
we don't want to do the overhang here we'll do the overhang over on this side so we can get our height um, dimension from the base of the building to the underside of the roof 12 foot something seven and three quarters we'll go to the peak of the roof do our fascia board do our overhang and pull it down overhang on the front and again use your modification tool to move your text where you need to height the bottom of the window sill some of the stuff will be noted so it's not really that important in this case over to our title block. We're going to change some uh, text here. Hopefully. There we go. And this one's going to be called uh, uh, Shed Project. And we'll just say CT120. Your name, class, CT120, whatever you want to put there. Change the date. It's going to be 11 16 09. Scale. When we type architectural scales as one quarter, excuse me, one quarter inch equals one foot dash zero inches. Okay. We're going to add a label our. We're going to use our text style, maybe our 10 text in green. It's going to say plan view. So in architectural, we say plan instead of top view. We're going to say front elevation. And we're going to say right side elevation. Okay, and we can say, we're going to put some notes on here now. So we'll say roof. Make sure we do this in red. Outline. You notice how that's got a curve on it? Uh, what I did was, if you go over here and drop this down, you can see that the leader type can be a curve. Just gives it a little warmer feel to it. Um, this window, we'll put a note on there that's a uh, two foot six inch by four foot zero inch double hung window. Pretty basic. I'm going to say 3 foot 0 inch by 6 foot 8 inch uh, solid core wood door. A lot of times with solid core it's just SC. And we'll put that right there. Probably do that in 07 text. 
wonder if I can modify change text attributes. <laughs> I can. I just want my notes to match the dimension styles. So you can put any notes. This is uh We'll put a note here that just says uh, two by six roof rafters at 16 inches O period C period on center. And some of that probably should be on the framing. So we got this one done. Uh, we'll save some time. Just take your selection tool. We'll select top view, front view, right side. And go to our sheet, page two. Do a control V. Hmm. I guess I didn't copy it. Page one. I guess I selected it, but didn't. Do a control C, page two, control V. There they are. We'll just put this text up here. <coughs> Excuse me, this one's going to change here. It's just going to say isometric view or perspective. Um, framing parentheses NTS. NTS means just not to scale. So people can kind of look at this and see the framing detail that we've put into it. Again here we can kind of uh, dimension our rough openings. On this rafter, if I change this to true, I think I can just snap here. It automatically, I'll just hit N. So it gives me the five and a half. And again, we can modify this to pull the text to the outside. Uh, we've got a couple angle cuts here. It's a 712 pitch. Um, let's see if we can put an angle. We messed with this last time, remember. If I use this one, it says select start of dimension oh, start of dimension would be here select axis point, there we go so we can actually put our angles on here as to what we would be cutting the angle of the rafters at um, we'll put our rough opening here change it back to view and I guess I'll do it on the bottom I also wonder sometimes on some of these dimensions if we take our smart line dimension and just use this option and just say we want the length above. Can I just left click on this? And it actually will give me, if I say length below, the cut length on some of these framing pieces. Which is kind of cool. If you're a carpenter, you'd uh, maybe appreciate that aspect of it where you can just kind of dimension right along the edges of these pieces. Uh, any of these studs, we can dimension the uh, actual cut length of the top edge of them. I don't know how important that is, but or whether you'd trust them. I might. Just another option that you can use on these. Anything else you might want to dimension, you can do overall on the framing. Outside edge to outside edge be 12 feet down here. This one's going to be 
outside edge to outside edge it's going to be eight feet and again you see this come up where we need to move this note down here below so we're keeping everything kind of separated on here uh, you could put some notes out here say all all framing to be 16 inches on center to place a note we'll just do it like this 07 you can just start typing uh, note colon all framing to be 16 inches O period C typical um, both floor, wall, and roof. And just place that note like over here somewhere. <coughs> we'll go ahead and print this one now. Assuming I've got all my information in, say file, print. Thinking, thinking. I'm going to go file, select Bentley driver. I'm going to go to my documents, my utility directory, my printer. We'll say pen table attach. There's my pens. And we're going to say file. Make sure it says one down here so we know we're getting the right scale. Print. I'm going to send this to our homework directory. <coughs> it's going to be two pages so of course we have to wait for my computer to stop messing around here. There we go. My documents. Homework. This one's going to be called Assignment 12, C. Junkins. And we'll say Sheet. Well, it already says Page 2 there, so we just need to take this off. Make sure this one says Page2.pdf. Hit Save. and it's thinking and rasterizing that one's done we just go down here change to page one all this comes up <coughs> settings are still the same we're going to say file print. This is page one. Make sure we send it to my documents. Homework. There's assignment 12 page two. This is going to be assignment 12 page one. Hit save. It's going to go through the th same thing. <coughs> And it's finished. Sorry, I fell asleep there for a second. I'm going to minimize this. We want to go check those before we before we do anything else. Go check them. I'm going to go to homework. We get down to assignment 12. There's page one. Take a quick look at it. first thing you want to check when it comes up is my name on the title block. It is. I'll zoom around just to take a look at my line weights. That all looks good. Pan down. I mean, there's more notes we could put on here but it's really kind of unnecessary. I think you get the, the hang of what we're doing. And we'll open up the second page which should be the good one because it's got that isometric page two same thing this nice framing detail in isometric where somebody can look at that and really see how we're putting it together down here we can see some of the dimensions and locations for things for our framing looks good um, again you could put more notes on it if you want but uh, this all looks pretty good 
over the title block, make sure my name's on it, and we're going to close this out. You're going to take both of those drawings, make sure your names are on them, and you're going to dump them into the first class assignment 12 folder, and that'll be in first class by uh, by the morning, so or by Wednesday morning, so it'll be there by the time you get this started. And that should take care of you. Turn it in, and we'll be starting something new on Monday. Thank you.